Graze, rest, regenerate, repeat. That is the motto of Good Life Grass Farms, located in Newton County near Pierce City, Missouri. Located within the Shoal Creek watershed of Southwest Missouri, the majority of landscape in this watershed is grassland. The state of Missouri is made up of approximately 10.5 million acres of pasture, which represents about 24% of Missouri's landscape. How pastures are managed can have positive or negative impacts on Missouri's land and water resources. At Good Life Grass Farms, a rotational grazing system, including fencing cattle out of the stream, providing watering systems, utilizing sheep for weed control, and moving livestock between paddocks is used to raise quality meat, save on operating expenses, and increase the ecosystem health of both land and water. Adam Bowman, the owner and operator of Good Life Grass Farms, explains his farm operation. So on this farm, when we, when we bought it, it was three big fields of about 40 acres of beans. Overgrazed, abused, the creek was abused, the stream banks were you know, beaten down. All the manure paddies were underneath trees. You know, they weren't out in the field. So mm -hmm. when we came in, we worked with NRCS, the Soil and Water District. Um, we divided the, the property into 21 paddocks. So, you know, we put up interior fencing. We fenced out the stream, which, you know, is a lot, it's a lot easier for me to find babies in the spring like this because we just finished calving. But uh, keeps keeps the cattle out of the stream. We did a, a water pipeline of about a mile all the way through the property. So each one of those 21 paddocks has its own uh, water tank that feeds it. Actually, they all, they all, they split down a fence so they feed two different fields. But so by doing that, you know, the, the big things are manure management. So the, the, cat, the cattle are not spending tons of time in the woods or down by the creek. The manure, the urine's going, you know, back up, out into the field. But, but the biggest thing with, you know, doing BMPs like that on a property, this is about 100 acres, is, is you grow so much more grass for your animals. At the end of the day, by rotating our cattle through those paddocks, we're, we're growing a lot more grass through the season and, and we're stockpiling grass four times that we need it later. So I'll be stockpiling, like this field here, we'll have them in here for two days and they're gonna eat about half the grass. Uh, then we're going to move them on. So then I, I'm leaving that grass. I'm stockpiling it here for 40 days from now. Um, when we could be in a drought, it, it's hard to say. Uh, same thing in the in the fall as we're rotating through those fields. We're building a stockpile of grass behind us so we can graze well into the winter. Last year it was like the first week of January when we really started feeding hay. So you know, your bottom line is you're saving a lot of money on hay. We're not feeding near as much hay as you would if you if you didn't have a rotational grazing system set up. But also, huge thing on your financial side of things is we don't ever fertilize. So you mean you see the grass here, but when I first bought the property, we put down a little bit of chicken litter four years ago. But I, I will never fertilize again. At our other farm, I've been been grazing there for 12 years. Same thing, we put down fertilizer the first year, but after that, we've never fertilized. So. So you're growing more grass and you're spending less money, no money on fertilizer. So it's a huge win-win and it all comes about by those BMPs, the, in the interior fencing, the watering systems that, that allows you to rotate, not overgraze, leave plants behind that have root depth that can reach down, get that water once it gets dry where other fields that were grazed off really low would not be able to reach down for that water they wouldn't the soil wouldn't be holding as much water so in june and july these cool season grass fields will still be growing a lot of grass where a, con a conventional continuously grazed field that was short didn't have much organic matter in the soil you know it's going to dry up and your grass is going to stop growing pretty early but we can just push on through, produce a lot more grass through the summer, and, and even you know uh, warm season grasses and stuff too are gonna do a lot better with that, having the rest, having more water available to them. In management intensive rotational grazing systems, around 60% of the forage grown is often utilized, while in a continuous grazing system, only 30% of the forage grown is utilized. 
Therefore, sometimes farmers can double their stocking rates when they switch to a rotational grazing system. Use of rotational grazing provides more grass for forage for longer in the season, integrates manure management, and improves soil moisture management, which reduces the need for costly fertilizer and hay, and provides more resilience in times of too much or too little rainfall. So you did notice in our pastures, there are quite a few weeds in those more mature pastures. So on our, on our farm, we actually do not own a tractor. We don't own a sprayer. We don't, we don't brush hog. Um, but what we do have is a sheep flock. And by using a sheep flock to manage those weeds, uh, we make more money. We're turning our weeds into money. We're, we're selling our weeds to folks in New York and, and Chicago in the form of lamb. Um, so that's great for us, right? Um, we're making more money, we're more profitable per acre, but also for the stream side of things, you know, we're not using pesticides. We're not, we're not just going out spraying our pastures. We're not using fertilizer as well, like we said. And it's been proven, you know, through many studies that fertilizer and pesticides, you know, definitely run off into streams and have negative effects. So by doing our grazing system, we're eliminating fertilizer. We're utilizing hair sheep to graze those weeds making a lot bigger profit on that and the stream benefits at the same time. So we're, we're trying to get the water cycle back to what it was 100, 200 years ago. Uh, when buffalo were, were grazing through this area, they would you know graze it real hard, maybe smash down a lot of grass and move on and not come back for several months or maybe till, till the next year. So us moving our cows through that system mimics that, that bison herd, uh, it's smashing down the organic matter, moving on, we're not coming back for 45 days. So that, that system mimics the, what was happening for centuries and centuries to create the streams that we have now. So we talked a little bit about how we let our grass accumulate in the spring and that gets the water to soak in, protects the soil from drying out from the sun. Um, so last year is a, is a really good example of how that can really help, a, help an outfit really good in a drought. So last year, you know, it rained through May, a lot of rain in May, and then it just shut off in June, not a drop, through June and July. A lot of operations around had to start feeding hay in July, August. Um, we didn't have to, we didn't feed any hay last summer. This is about 100 acres on this farm. We had 30 cows and 75 sheep, which is a pretty pretty high stocking rate. Um, and so when the when the rain shut off in June, we just kept our rotation. We kept you know coming back through about every 40 days. Um, and the water that was that was in the soil, it was protected from that real thick grass mat that we grew in in May. Um, and now by the time end of August come around, you know, August, September, we were, we were getting pretty low. We were pretty, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd grazed pretty low, but again, we didn't have to feed, feed hay. Um, and then in the fall, when the rains came, our cool season grasses with their healthy root systems were able to go ahead and grow uh, a pretty good amount of grass where if they were grazed low through the spring and summer, again, they're, they're not gonna let the water go in, um, but the roots are gonna be really short um, and they, they were, they're not going to be able to respond in the fall, but our grasses were able to respond and we didn't start feeding hay until, until the end of December, uh, beginning of January last year. This is one of our riparian plantings. We did this about, oh, seven years ago, I believe. So you can see the sycamores lined up. This was an eroding bank. Um, every time it flooded, the whole field was had logs and debris everywhere in it. It took my fences down. Both of both of those cross fences will be on the ground. Now that we've got these sycamores up here, when it does flood two or three times a year, it gets up and it gets in the field. The debris caught on the trees. You know, it doesn't take my fences out anymore, and I don't have to pick up all the, you know, the brush in the in the field. Obviously, that's great for stream bank erosion, shade for the aquatic invertebrates and fish and everything, the whole aquatic community. And yeah, it's just. It, it helps I do less flood pickup um, because of the riparian corridor. Uh, keeps my cattle out of the stream so I don't have to go look for them. You know, if I didn't have that fenced out, I mean, 
I wouldn't be able to rotate near as efficiently. This is our grass-fed finishing farm, so I rotate every one to two days here. Um, and yeah, I mean, if the cattle are in there, they're going to be they're not going to want to come out to move. Uh, they're also going to be depositing the manure and urine in the riparian corridor where it doesn't do any good out here in the field. You know, they they spend more time grazing if there's not you know a creek to lounge in. Um, Creek water and pond water is also bad for foot problems and stuff. So, lots of benefits for the cows in the riparian corridor, and um, obviously, huge benefits for the stream. When we get these heavy rains in the spring, um, we've got vegetation, really good root depth, organic matter. Instead of that water running off into the stream and causing erosion for me, flooding for my neighbor downstream, you know, that water goes into the ground and slowly released through the through the spring you know through june july um, which benefits the critters in the stream they have good stream flow you know through the whole summer versus uh potentially drying up if we don't have good infiltration and then also the manure management that you know we're, again we're keeping all of our manure um urine not in the creek not in the riparian corridor out here in the field where it's very valuable to us but it, at, the, at the same time, it would be negative um, to the stream. Again, it's just a win-win. Um, the BMPs keep the manure and the water here for us to use them and not in the stream where they're going to have negative effects. We're trying to capture as much water, put it in the soil as we can in the springtime. So whenever weather gets hot and everything starts to dry out, we have that water in our soil that's been you know stored that of course relates back to the stream because we have slow release you know through the summer into the stream we got our spring fed creek over here to, to the right um, but to get that water to stay on our place and our soil to hold more water we we have to address the carbon cycle so we're looking at growing more forage uh, we don't really care if it, if it gets too mature, but we're looking at growing as much forward as we can as we can in the spring. We're moving a lot to have those plants they keep growing and accumulate the forage through the spring. So in the summertime, whenever it gets a little more dry, uh, the plants get more mature. We'll actually smash that grass down onto the ground um, as organic matter to put more carbon in the soil. So then the soil in turn holds more water through the through that year and in upcoming years. Yeah, so I'm also a big outdoorsman. I've always hunted and fished my whole life. And, you know, I love agriculture. I love regenerative grazing. Um, I'm super passionate about it, but I'm also passionate about wildlife. So another awesome benefit of, you know, grazing the way we do uh, is there's so many wildlife species that benefit. You can see butterflies all around me, bees. Uh, spiders is, a, is actually a really good indicator of how healthy, of how many uh, insects that are in your pasture because the more insects the more spiders are going to be able to live off those so it's really cool in the, and especially in the fall when the spider population is really high we just have so many spiders because there's so many insects you know, living in our pasture uh, bobwhite quail turkey deer all of that you know we have them all over the place uh, clover is, is a big part of not being able to fertilize. So we have a lot of clover in our pastures. And so, you know, I got quail, turkey, deer, all that, love clover. Healthy soils and happy cows.